family. My mother. My older brother, Junior. Me. My younger brother, Jamal. This is my family. This is my mother and my nephew, Paul. This is me, Johnny. This is my youngest brother, Benny. These are my twin sisters. Anna and Linda. This is my youngest sister, Mona. Everything, everything happens in the kitchen. She called this film the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to have him on by a doctor, and I had a quad. <laughs> <laughs> he almost killed me. What happened? Well, he came. He kept uh, giving me shots, and looked I didn't have any pain. And he just took. He said, "What's my time?" He said, "A whole month." He said, "Mom is supposed to be born in August." He was born in June, July. July. And he left me on the table after he delivered that baby, and he took off. In my, in the kitchen, in my kitchen table. In your house? Yeah, absolutely. Jamal was born at home? Jamal was born at home. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be born, but he, he said that he was going to do it right then and there. I was with him. Forced it in a way, huh? Well, I had a premature baby. Jamal was born on a table? Yeah, on a kitchen table. <laughs> on on uh, Decatur Street? On Decatur Street. Oh. <laughs> and not only that, if it wasn't for Hazel, maybe he would have never been born. Oh. He's the one who really pulled him out. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Got to keep that control, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the policeman came over and he said, we w uh, the ambulance came. Because mm. Almeida came and she called the ambulance and said, come on. And uh, each time they the call up that he was dying, the two police came over. Yeah. yeah, she told me to make arrangements. Your mom was dead. <laughs> oh, I want that baby. I have to have that baby. Go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Almeida. <laughs> they did. He came in that Monday morning. And the old boy was gorgeous, you know, the first kid. <laughs> Go get that baby. I want that baby. Mm -hmm. I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, that's just <coughs> my best baby was Junior, my oldest. Junior? Oh, eight months. He got off the bed. He never went to bed. He walked, ate, talked, did everything. Raymond was 11 months trained, and Jamal was the last 15 months old. So I'm behind him. Yes, he told me yesterday how terrible he was. Yes, she couldn't cook, couldn't wash, couldn't hang up clothes, but she had to be carrying him everywhere she went. <laughs>
Yeah. You didn't like a tailor top? She bought him a pair of what? Boston sign shoes? Uh, that's not right. Shoes? <laughs> she found him in the street park and wore him in the park with his shoes. <laughs> And I left in Vegas with the Teresa and Dorfer and her. And he didn't want to stay there at the place for dinner, but I said, well, you're watching. And the bus driver brought him home 3 o'clock in the morning. He was swinging. Well, when I was talking about he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about he was sleeping. I remember that. He snuck out, and I walked to the park, and I was swinging. Y'all was looking for me. I was home. I was. I just went to the park. You claim you took those busted brown shoes with you, Bella. What about uh, what about Dad? What was he into? Dad, Ty, he used to keep him in his bed. When he was uh, about 11, 11 months old, he already climbed out of his baby bed. So the only way I could keep him, I'd tie him, but I'd not tight, you know, I'd tie him. And he saw he was tied, so he knew he couldn't get out, so he'd sleep. But if I didn't tie him, he'd get out and get into the, my pot, some pan that had to be getting up, and get something back in, getting out, and putting back in that bed. Yeah. So I'd just figure a way, and I'd tie him. <laughs> like what he used to do with Eddie Mendoza. Oh, he couldn't talk, he was three years old. He couldn't? No, they had a little hole. We had two rooms, in, a room in the kitchen at that time. They had a little hole. And she would be sleeping, and he would run and put sugar and put anything in that little hole would fall in my bed. Oh, I'd run upstairs, and we had to tie him every evening. <laughs> every evening, that kid had to be tied up. He couldn't talk. Hi. <laughs> Can you all come on together? No, I think so. Huh? Oh, wait, no, you can Oh, you're at 5 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, man, you don't like my shoes? Yeah, I noticed them. Oh, yeah, I noticed them. This is my sister. Sister? Yeah. 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 Uh, we, covered, we covered all kinds of things. Oh, that's a lot. How much you pay? 75? For this? Yeah. The wire rim, that's, that's, uh, that's gold. I paid thirty-eight dollars. I wouldn't pay no seventy-five dollars for this little brother. Today? Where did you go today? Oh, Can I come see from yours? I'm here. Doctor Baby. Him and Jesus were arguing there one day. I didn't realize how tired I was. Um, oh. He had glasses to read. Figure out where because they got uh, the stop on 17th Street or something like that. What about what about what about what about drugs? Well, I don't know about that. 
I mean, teenagers uh, all agree on it, you know. When it comes down to it, just say voting for it, they all kids want to vote for it, huh? But oh, mothers, I don't think so. Mothers don't like it. Here, here, Nellie. Our opinion always no, no. We never sign for it, you know. I believe I know I don't like it. I mean, it's certainly beautiful. Do the hobby. Have any drugs? Hobby? Why you need drugs? Why? I I think a couple of beers or a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> that would be much cheaper than buying all that junk they've taken that would ruin their health and their mind. Mm -hmm. They can't do nothing. They're very nervous and backwards. Everybody takes drugs is all drop out. That's true. Because they can't cope with the, what they're doing. They want to fight. That's all they're thinking about, fighting, fighting. They're not fighting. They just can't keep up with their work. Thank you, Billy. Oh, my God. Thank you. Talking about the uh, that happened in uh, on 26 and 26 Project over there, this police actually came out and forced a kid out of his house, beat up his father, and beat the father, which is an old man drunk. They say he drinks a lot, and his elbow, the bone even stuck out. They knocked him down the stairs. They beat up his son because he was interfering, he trying to stop him. Another beat him, and then another one a few days later. Then they came to this guy that forced him out of his house. They had no warrant, no, uh, <coughs> for no reason. Just came in there and one of the cops pulled his medal off and threw it on the ground. A little silly. A little silly. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so then the cop says, yeah. pick it up. So he picks it up and kicks him right in the ass. Yeah, he did that? Did? Yeah, they hit him. Yeah. And all the other kids were scared to uh, get involved, you know? Yeah. How old was the boy? Um, Nineteen-year-old. And forced him. Mom and the, and the wife were screaming and hollering, trying to hold him back, and they still forced him out. Yeah, because no uh, reason. that's what they do about my cop. And they thought George did it, so they just put George right there. And he didn't do it. Well, that's what I said. A lot of things they don't do. Mm -hmm. I remember what killed them. I remember what went And yesterday, the cop outside Let actually me. told your sister, and your sister, you know, she's pregnant, expecting a baby any time, take your fucking car. Don't park your fucking car right there. You know, just that word. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, what he told me? They, they do all that, you know, like, like, like I said, like, they do that. They don't live here. Man. Yeah, but they're nice to people. People could probably answer them nicely, too. Well, I'm sorry, you know? They could say, I'm sorry I parked there, but then they come in with their vulgar words yeah. and their rough treatment, and people get a hostile to and start doing the same. I mean, well, that's after all. Uh, Now give her those things. She got it. Too. This one was more nice than the other one because it went right through. Okay, watch it, Mom.
high level. Well, shit, if I had a quad. Why should this cat be on welfare to this family? 
Yeah, but you know what makes it really bad is the fact that, like, when you when, when you hear a program about welfare and you see these guys that uh, they got they, no, they yeah. work and they're in the middle income bracket and they say uh, first they got thing that comes out the term is they feel bad when they see somebody getting a lot of steaks and stuff and they got food stamps. But they got to figure that person isn't buying a house where they're buying a house and every day that house is building up equity for them. You know, and if they can't afford to buy a T-bone, it's just because they got their money so, you know, put out. They buying a house, they buying a new car, they got furniture, they got all these bills, you know. Where this other person, the only bill that he has is rent and food. Yeah, that's and hard. Yeah, they're going to to make yeah. rent and food, man. So why, why just, you know, if he, if he likes to eat a little bit, you don't get that much on a food stamp, you know. You might put $20 in, you get the... Uh, uh, Thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars worth of food. Big deal, you know. It's not, yeah. you know. You don't have to make homemade tortillas. Go to the store and buy it. Tortillas, two of them. That's gonna be too many. It's gonna be too many plants. It's gonna be too too many plants. It's already. I might have to go to the restaurant. You play when I leave. No, I won't. I'm gonna go to the Thank <laughs> you.